thinking about there's there's this um uh thing with old uh corporate culture methodologies where you you take your entire population of people with different backgrounds and different belief systems and different values and and so on and you say okay we're going to build a, a, a framework of, of acceptable behavior kind of principles. And then we create rules and guidelines. And then we create a control system to make sure that we can find people who are behaving the right way and identify those that aren't behaving the right way. And then we create a feedback system for them. And that should work and we'll build a common thing. Well, that just clearly didn't work well in corporate culture, first of all. Uh, <laughs> people are a little bit unpredictable. So it's very difficult to corral everybody uh, into things like that. But the other, the other thing is that business models change dramatically and, and these management models have changed dramatically as well. And you get a lot of these agile adaptive environments now and with younger generations, uh, they've, they've grown up in a completely different kind of digital native uh, world where we have information and the ability to communicate at our fingertips all, all day long. And it seems like the, the key drivers of, of corporate culture development in more adaptive organizations are uh, clear and, and open communication um, and information that's, that's disseminated throughout the entire organization. So everything becomes much more transparent. Uh, the second one is collaboration and this kind of, and, and collaborating becoming a part of the values of, of the organization. So if you think in most old corporate structures, if I share my, what I know, what I know, I lose my power. Uh, right. And so the, the new, the new kind of value system is around share everything you know because it's, it makes it easier for everybody to collaborate. And then you get these this community building aspect inside of business, and and really great leaders understand that they can use those internal communities, or as David Logan uh, wrote in the book Tribal Leadership, you can you can identify the tribes and speak to the tribes and get them to move to more productive behavior and more productive interaction with other tribes. Uh, so I think that that kind of thing, we could even apply in this situation in a decentralized movement by creating open, open source, let's say information and the ability for everybody to communicate and, and share and the ability for people to collaborate on what is a phenomenal goal, uh, creating equality and social harmony. Uh, that could be an amazing movement. Um, and then building these communities in there for people with oh. common interests and common dialogue. No, absolutely. I, I think you're right. And and I like the point that you brought up about the the idea of, you know, I call it in class, I call it knowledge hoarders versus knowledge sharers, right? And, yeah. and many in the old school think that hoarding knowledge is is my source of power. And you're right, the, the better leaders realize that that's actually a downfall, right? Sharing your your knowledge is that source of power and which and that's something that we we need to do more of and so let me ask you a question I, if i if, as you were talking about that i was thinking about these kind of the old model and these metrics and and or these kind of processes and I, and i agree with you 100 percent. do you think in the new way in the new kind of approach to leadership and and moving the agenda forward um what's your thought on just kind of starting at the very beginning and and hiring being you know, hiring the right people from the outset is how, what does that play? How much of a role does that play in your mind? I think people should be hired like, uh, like people do uh, blind auditions on the voice. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I like it. Yeah. That way, that way, at least skin color would not be part of it. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. 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 Uh, no, I think that, I think that would be, I think it would be really interesting uh, for companies to, uh, to have some blind hire. Uh, mm -hmm. like like where the the actually meeting the candidate is the absolute last thing that that's done um, okay. but understanding they have a track record of successes in a particular topic they've got they've got the right competencies developed they, they have a certain level of maturity and and uh, let's say ability to lead inspire uh, things like that so you, you could you could base it on uh, a, a right fit for uh, qualities competencies and experience <clears throat> before you okay. ever have to meet a person um, okay and and that could that could take uh, a little bit of, of the bias out of it um, right just right. As, as an idea um, yeah so uh, Zappos actually and I don't know if they still do it but uh, they, they the, the shoe online shoe company yeah. they used to um, pay people to leave so they would throw out up front so kind of blind what they would do is from the up other side is say this is who we are. This is everything that about us. This is who we are. Would you like to come work for us? 
and then they people you know sign on to join the company and then certain period in they say hey you know who we are this is what we've done we'll pay you to leave if you don't like it here and they had a lot of success with that model i used to mm -hmm. follow it i haven't followed it lately um and it's kind of a, a kind of a flip of trying to do what you the you know the uh, uh um you know the the voice kind of model but, it, but yeah. it seemed to have worked for them for a while yeah i know they also they uh, you had to have uh interviews uh with like 10 or 12 different people yes completely random just not yes. not, even, not even people related to the position that you would be in but just yes. to get people to say yeah this is one of ours or, or not, not yeah not absolutely yeah yeah